From the land down under, with the rock at its center, comes the little Aussie watchman. Dr. Robert Malone is dead wrong. Okay, before you comment that I'm an idiot and have no idea what I'm talking about, I mean, I certainly did, didn't develop the mRNA technology, which is the core mechanism behind many of the current vaccines, as Dr. Malone has. I think he is fantastic and has brought many issues to light that would have otherwise been overlooked. Have a listen to this, and I'll explain afterwards. If we continue to pursue this universal vaccination strategy in the face of the pandemic, particularly with Omicron now, a much more highly infectious, highly replication competent virus, what we risk is the dr driving the virus through basic evolution to a state where it may be more pathogenic and more able to elude immune response. So in sum, I don't wish to scare, we've had enough fear porn, but if we continue to pursue universal vaccination, the high probability is that what we will continue to see is the evolution of additional escape mutants that are increasingly infectious and may well become more pathogenic. My line predicts that vaccination will cause evolution of the virus to become more pathogenic, i.e. disease-causing. He predicts this because he believes in the fundamental precepts of evolution. The fact is there is absolutely no chance the virus will become increasingly pathogenic for one simple reason. Evolution is false, and certainly false in the way Dr Malone understands it. Vaccination will certainly drive escape mutants, that is for sure. But these escape mutants will become more and more comparable to the common cold. Natural selection and RNA errors within the virus are real, but they can virtually never by random chance continually increase pathogenicity in a virus. They do the exact opposite. As the RNA mutates, errors increase within the RNA of the virus, causing it to become less and less functional. This translates into less and less pathogenicity or disease-causing ability by the virus. This is why Omicron is so much less pathogenic than Delta. While this downward trend of pathogenicity is predictable and observable, there may be one or two variations in this. For example, there is some proof that Delta may have been a little more pathogenic than the original Alpha variant. These RNA viruses degenerate quicker than DNA, and therefore their pathogenicity degenerates even quicker than a DNA organism. I would assume, but do not have any proof to back this up, that man-made viruses such as COVID would probably inherently be unstable, and even more likely to degenerate quicker. Think of the virus like a machine, and the RNA like the instruction manual for the machine. One can understand quite quickly that random chances in the well, random changes in the instruction manual are unlikely to improve the machine in a functional way. And given that those errors are rapidly occurring, they're overwhelming any method in which the virus can remove those errors that can harm its function. These degenerate viruses can only take over from the previous variant if they are more infective or they escape the holding effect of the vaccine. The question you should be asking me is if a virus becomes less functional, how can it become more infective? The answer is simply that as the RNA is degenerating, it removes some of the barriers within the virus that slows its spread. It is yet to be determined the exact nature of why this happened in Omicron, but there is also another potential reason for the increase in, in infectivity in Omicron. It seems that vaccinated people are more likely to catch and spread it. There is a mechanism called antibody-dependent enhancement. This is a scenario whereby the vaccinated population have developed an antibody that can coat viruses with antibodies, making them more likely to enter the human cell and therefore cause infection. This happens as immunity wears off, i.e. there is enough immunity to catch the virus, but not enough to kill it. There is no need to feed into the fear porn narrative in this. New dangerous viruses degenerate quickly, and we have seen this repeatedly over the last hundred years. The most obvious example of this is the H1N1 Spanish flu of 1913, which caused significant more, more mortality than COVID. It quickly degenerated and became less and less pathogenic until it eventually went extinct in 2006. Not to say that COVID cannot appear. Given man's propensity to, to engineer viruses, it seems that they are probably going to do it again.